to, I think, the beans, so to speak. Yeah, that's the reading of what I'm saying. But I have my guests with me right now, three uh, guests, and I will start from my immediate right. Michael Friday is the Chief Executive Officer at Vivid Global. He's also a House of Representatives aspirant under APC, isn't he? Yes. Welcome to the program. Thank you. To my immediate uh, left is Paul Alaje, Senior Economist at SPM Professionals. Welcome, Paul. How are you doing? Great. Thank you so very much for having me. Yetunde Bakro is a Senior uh, Program Officer at Iaga Africa. So we're two ladies on the table. Yes. Yeah, I think it's balanced. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's see what we can do with this man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, Yetunde, let me start with you now, with what I've just said. Since we are balanced, it's 50-50 here on the table. Do you think that Nigerian politics has matured to the point that women can begin to have a voice, especially now that money is driving our politics? Um, to answer your question, money is not, it's, it's not just starting now that money is driving um, Nigerian politics. Um, women participation in politics um, over time has also been recorded as very, very low. Um, this um, is as a result of the structures within the political parties and how women, men, as well as people living with disability emerge as candidates within the political party. Um, so the challenge is with how do they emerge as candidates and how do they win the elections? How do the political party and the structure within the political party ensure that women emerge as winners of um, the office that they are running for within the political party? Um, over time, we have also realized and research has also shown that women are not actively you know running for elective offices there's been a low level participation of women in elective offices within the political party as well women are still seen as people who should stay at home and fend for their family pursue a career politics is seen as something that is for men only um, because one is characterized by electoral violence um, how many women can stand the tides of electoral violence in Nigeria um, so it is still relatively low a uh, woman can participate participate in election. We have seen um, a growth, especially from the 2015 general election, we've seen an increase of women participation in the parliament. The number of women in the National Assembly has also but, increased. But, but hasn't it, the role of women, um, I'm just starting with that, perhaps because we are both women on the table, but the role of women in, the, uh, in politics, hasn't it even decreased since this administration came on board? Because women had it fairly, or better, let me put it that way, from the year of the time to the Jonathan administration. Now, during the Buhari's administration, how many women are in parliament, for example? How many women are holding up, uh, appointment positions, so to speak? How many women have the wherewithal right now in terms of money, like we're discussing, mm -hmm. to go into the political ring? Mm. Um, yes, those are some of the challenges, but it's better to look at it as what can we as women do? How can we support women? who are brave enough you know, to go on this side to run for elective office, what can we do as women to support each other? What can we do as women to ensure that female aspirants who are running for elective offices who do not have the funds, how are we able to crowdfund for these women who are running for elective office? Um, it's, it's quite a shame that um, the, appo the, the um, appointment of women in appointive position is relatively low. Um, it is one of the campaign promises of the president when he was contesting for the 2015 elections that we will see an increase of women participation in elective and appointive office. And it is sad to see that when this same administration was appointing, you know, for the appointive offices, women were relatively low. How many women are heading MDAs in Nigeria? Um, how many women? Uh, thriving in business. So we have limited women to only business and, and building a career. But if there is no woman in an elective position, in where decisions are being made on women issues, how will our issues be well represented? Okay, Paul, you are the economist right now. Yeah. So, you know, just like I said at the beginning of the program, I'm, I'm approaching the political ring now <laughs> because a lot of people know me and this show as, oh, it's business, mm. it's economics and all of that, but there's what we call political economy. And I cannot be you know, ignorant of the fact of what is happening right now in the country, if not for our sake, for our children and our grandchildren. So the question to you is that how much of money drives the game of politics? Mm, to a large extent, money drives politics. Um, before uh, the 
um, say Nigeria independence, we've had a situation where some persons who are considered as maybe not the very rich, but rich uh, elite in Nigeria have put people together. And uh, you see giving people, say, cups of uh, gari and so on and so forth to go contest. Some persons even put, at some point, money inside some material to give to people. But it was not this bad as at that time, because uh, we, you were not faced with the issue of delegates uh, giving them money to contest elections. You were not faced with the issue of spending so much money for everybody to see you to actually correct the narrative you might have had in the media, which could be wrong uh, already. So we might not, we, we really did not have so much of this. But what do we have today? For someone to contest as a president, or for, for a poor person, because we need to bring it down to the reality we are now. Nigeria is currently the headquarter. It's not an enviable position of poor people in the world. But if you want to spend 45 million naira to buy a farm and your minimum wage, you it's will need two, naira. you will need 208 years to save to the save money. money. I don't know how long you have to live. If you go to PDP, you will need 55 and a half years to save your 18,000 naira. That means you to have to fast yes. in order to get 12 million or 208 years in order to get 45 million. How long will it take? Which means the poor, whether they are living or dead, they cannot even afford to buy the to, to buy the form. So uh, it, it, the question also will be is politics for the poor? It is supposed to be. It's the game of politics for it the is, poor people. It is. Hold on, <laughs> let's ask now the aspirants <laughs> in our okay. list. It's the game of politics now for the poor. You're aspiring to the House of Representatives under APC, yeah. isn't it? How do you think now that money, or how much money do you even have to contest? Let me ask you that direct question. Wow, I think, uh, <laughs> well, um, from what. Um, my brother here is saying, you can uh, agree with me that um, politics as it is, you cannot do politics without money. And from my own point of view, as an individual, as an aspirant, I can tell the whole world, Nigeria and everybody that care to listen, that we need to make politics less attractive. That is one thing we must note. Secondly, we need to come to a point where people that are varying for one position or the other into government should be a class of people that have something to contribute to the economy, to the system, and everything that we do as a nation. The reason why you are in, you see a parliament today, somebody will get angry and pick a bottle and is throwing the bottle and chairs at the par parliament, a hallowed ground of the nation. It's just because that can tell you the background at which that person is coming from. You cannot just rule out the money politics because look at it now, for example, American president, when he was coming in, he said, I've got all the money. I'm relaxed, I'm settled. That's I want Trump. To, yes, I want to contribute my quota to my nation. But 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 it's still had people that contributed. People contributed, people contributed but you see that a lot of at the end of the day, what he spent for his election was Ten times more than what people contributed, and today he's seated there in that office, not earning any salary. He's just picking one dollar from his salary every month because he's there to contribute. So as long as we continue to see politics as a means, a quicker means of getting rich for those that are coming in, you see a tart from the street just emerge because they can fight, because they can sponsor boys to come and uh, snatch ballot boxes and all of that. If they step into power, you know that the same thing will continue because that is their orientation. So I am calling on the well-meaning Nigerians, business expertise, professionals that have something to deliver. Those that have built companies that are already striving should come on board and show us the right way because I can tell you categorically that we'll be missing it in many ways. Okay, now let's go to the issue dovetailing from what you've said, which is the issue of politics as an investment in Nigeria. Because now it seems like it's an investment. You're seeing that even a lot of politicians right now, or would be politicians that want to go into the political arena, are selling their properties. Some that have properties are already selling them uh, to get money to finance their campaigns or, or whatever political activity they want to do. How much of politics is an investment and how should we, you know, alienate that? Because you did say something uh, that, of course, Donald Trump, and we've seen some even other 
uh, uh, countries around the world that the presidents or the leaders, as it were, are not really particular about how much they earn or what they can get. Come back to Nigeria, President um, Buhari and Oshibajo, VP Oshibajo, I think at the beginning said they are slashing their salaries 50%, yes. and I think that is still on. They haven't told us otherwise. So they are not taking their full Salary. salaries, as it were. Yes. How can we begin as Nigerians? Well, Nigerian politicians, not to see politics as an investment. And as a do or die matter, we go win today if we no win. Person must die there. Let me speak that, that, that pigeon so that our people can understand what I'm saying. Yet today, you want to respond um, if I yes. come to Paul? Um, I think it's um, the, political, the political parties is still the only means that people can emerge as candidates to run for elections. Without a political party, you cannot run for an election. Um, so, except we begin to structure our political parties um, such that people who emerge as candidates of political party are people who have competence, who have character, who are going into office because they have something to offer. Because of the high cost involved in electioneering in Nigeria, first, you look at the high cost for purchasing um, your nomination from an expression of interest, and that is not just it. Um, look at the cost as well that would also allow the aspirant go around his constituency to sell his mandate to the people. That also costs a lot of money. So let's look at the post-election era as well. If there's a litigation case of, against you, against your, the way you uh, assumed office, there, that would also cost a lot of money. Um, so politics in itself, except we can begin to um, rethink how candidates emerge in political parties, or perhaps a better option would be independent candidacy, such that people can, you know, by themselves run for office so without perhaps, going under political parties. Perhaps what we're now trying to say, or what you're trying to say, is that the political architecture should change. Yes. Do, do you, all of you on the table, do you agree that, that the political architecture should change? Well, I agree with that in a way. But on the other way around, if you make the process uh, to be too simple, so to say, you can now say that all those people that are coming into power and turning our parliament into a boxing ring will now have more access to come into power. So it's not just um, possible for you to rule out the issue of qualification, one. Secondly, you have to have what it takes to run for any political office. Like when you talk about nomination form now, if you make nomination form like 500,000 or 200,000 now, one political godfather somewhere can afford to buy 30, 20, 200 nomination form for boys to go there and scatter the primaries and then before you know the litigation. In fact, you know what I also heard so, that some godfathers as it were, because at the time, we also saw Godfatherism in Nigeria. I don't know if it has faced out. No, it has not. It's still there. It's still, it is. Some, so it's still in place. Some yes. Godfathers, we just go to the party secretariat and buy all the forms. Then if you want to contest, you come to their houses, mm -hmm. deposit money higher. And go there and, uh, and represent collect, their interests. And represent their interests. Yes. And they'll tell you how much you need to be bringing for me mm. every month. Mm. Abuse. Well, talking about the investment, um, as economists, what comes to my mind is ROI, return on such investment. Investment, which is so, high. So um, uh, starting <laughs> from a picking of form, we might think oh, it's just something oh, people can gather, my friends could put money together. They are not doing it for the sake of God. They are doing it for the sake of their investment because that buying the form for you is a form of investment. So you take it up to delegate elections. Delegate also are not delegate just because they are member of political party. They are looking for some kind of money to also gain in rewards, to, to, to survive. Lastly, you now come to the public, where vote buying perhaps are now owed to it. So you now collect 5,000 era, or in some cases 4,000 era, 1,000 era per annum. Per year. Per year. So you sold your... Right. right. Now, what is the returns on investment to politician? Big deal. He can, he knows that at the end of the day, FCC will be after him. If you have enough money to hire out the sands in the world, maybe he will have his way. And in the FCC, maybe 50-50 chance. But what is the implication for our people? The implication is what you see around when you travel, you leave Abuja a few kilometers away. And you go to maybe Nasarawa, you go to Kogi, you see on development staring at our faces. Over 700 billion US dollars has been earned from crude oil. Many more has been earned from different platform taxes and so on and so forth. The question is, 
from the politics we've done over the time, we have done policies of sentiment, we have done policies of religion, we have done policies of tribal, that no, it is our turn, give it to us, they were given, oh, politics of sentiment. After all, he was a former vice president, it is time, let him continue the administration. Now we saw politics of sentiment, oh, we can do it, we have experience. What has been the return on all of these politics we've done? Because at the corner piece of our politics is money. This is what I advise. Politicians should have a second address. If you are not in politics, what else would you do? Let us check antecedent. Before you became politicians, what have what you done successfully? You so if somebody has not been able to manage his home or her home, or someone has not been able to manage, because people say that could be moral, manage a business, or someone has not, well, has not done well in his career, I'll give you an instance. A man who was, a, who was managing one of the airlines in Nigeria became one of the governors in North Central Nigeria. He ran the company aground. When he became state governor, he ran the state aground. The states were into indebtedness. Another one was a commissioner in one of the states in Southwest. Right now, he ran the state up to 900% debt to revenue. A state that had less than 100% debt to revenue. So you see the kind of policy belief because somebody who speak from being the chief talk in a place became commissioner uh, by law because it belongs to some political party. We ask questions. How much of change can this person bring to the community? The people are not aware. We still believe in God. For that reason, we have a politician who is richer than a whole state and has even confirmed it in statement. And we believe that we are not running money, money politics. What kind of politics do we run? No. What is the hope that you will win if your opposition is sponsored in billions of night and you have all the ideas, you know how you're going to impact your people, you want to represent them well, how will the money come? Now, are, are we now just talking of just uh, the party in power? Because, you know, I, I'm sure that we're not just talking the, about the party in power. We're, talking we're not about talking about the party in power. Yes. We've spoken, I started with politics of sentiment, yes, some yes. of vice president, I becoming president. It's clear what, what, what I want to establish, administration was referring to. What I, what I want to establish is we are t talking at least about not just the two major political parties, but the political system in Nigeria. Nigeria. Now, so much, there was so much hue and cry about the cost of nomination forms and a group of people that bought forms worth 45 million for the president. You just gave us your own data. At the beginning of the program, I also gave my own data that if the president wants to buy this form in one year, he will be earning about 3.75 million a month, or even more than that, because he will eat, you will, he will do other things for his family. So he should be earning more than that to get about 3.75 million every month to buy nomination forms. That, uh, I don't know if we have the visual so that we can show it where the president, he has accepted the forms already. Now the issue is, how should we also be probing the source of funds? Now I want us, I want uh, you to respond to Fester Skeyamo. Uh, he tweeted and said, that was some days ago, about when this issue of the cost of nomination forms came up, some group of people bought the forms for the president. He said on Twitter, and I quote, same people that said nothing last week when a group donated nomination forms to a crying opposition aspirant are now descending on PMB and misquoting the law. It is more honorable to openly support a candidate of your choice than hiding behind one figure and looking ridiculous. He went further to say, some mischievous persons are reading sub section 91, subsection 9 of the Electoral Act upside down. The section limits cash, not material, in parentheses that he put it, not material donations in respect of candidates to one million naira. He's talking about the Electoral Act. PMB is not a candidate. He is an aspiring aspirant. He becomes an aspirant only when he submits his forms to his party. Respond. <laughs> that is, it's, um, it's a defense to the group of people that bought the 45 million naira form for the president. What do you think? Well, uh, in all of this, I understand uh, the man is doing his job. And um, I'm not really surprised for what he's doing. He's expected. Um, he's, he's a spokesperson of that uh, campaign organization, more or less. So he needs to do um, kudos to him. But this is my point. From the main opposition party, where you have seen people and even see tears rolling down eyes of, 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 of one of the big wheat in the country, and also uh, the We've president. We've been having tears. Even the president yes, cried some cried time ago. Some time ago. ago. So mm -hmm. all of those ones, to me, I see all of that as big drama of people who want to. You know, Nigerians are very sentimental. 
What I want to see or what I expect the, the learned uh, person to mention is what are the economic policy you would make? It is not about the money. See, even if the form is 1,000 naira, even if the form, I beg your pardon, is 100,000 naira, available research shows 87, 87 million Nigeria already disqualified because they are disgruntled, they are among the poor of the poor. If there is a godfather who can avoid 45 million, the group can also avoid 100 million. Because you are seeing the hand of Jacob, but the voice you are, you are the hand of Esau, but the voice you hear is that of Jacob. So are so you saying that perhaps there's, a, there, yeah, perhaps there's also a back door? There is. There is a back door. Uh, um, there is a back door thing happening by, you're saying, perhaps giving the group some kind of money coming from the one, groups this time the, the groups, groups this time that means all the, the groups can, are actually very rich to be buying 10 million 12 million 45, 15, 45 million. 45 million why are they not buying for other um unpopular quote and unquote or professional candidates okay let me because ask they are looking for are you, are you on investment yourself, or yourself or your a group is also buying for you i picked my form myself you picked your form yourself yes okay now let's come to you today how does this money politics disenfranchise people, young people especially? With a clamor for not too young to run. We've heard the president say, not too young to run people, just hold on first though. Let me do my own. After my own, is your turn, isn't it? Yeah. Um, first, how many young people? Um, with the current minimum wage in Nigeria, which is 18,000 18, naira, yeah. like you rightly said, you made a calculation. Like if you're handing 18,000 naira, how many years it will take you to get the money for the farm? One. Close to 200 years, and you may not 208. live up to that. 208 years, right? Um, that, in the first instance, is the example of how young people are being disenfranchised from the, from, from the political system. Because it is not just about the form. The expression of interest and nomination form is the first step. A whole lot of process goes into you emerging as the candidate of your political party. So finance is the first thing that's in that the participation of young people in the, in the electoral process. The Not Too Young to Run, the Not Too Young to Run Act now as taking away the um, age impediment, which is limiting youth political participation. But money still plays a critical part in our politics. And this is such a shame to see political parties who were then clamoring for not too young to run, not too young to run, release the expression of interest and nomination form, and intentionally exclude young people from participating in the electoral process, because that is the very first step. That is the very first step for entrance into the political system. And you intentionally excluded young people now, let me come back to Paul, and I want your response as an economist with what's happening right now, especially, okay, let's take Osho State, for example. The elections are, are just by the corner. And a lot of people have been accusing this administration that why should you, for example, come up with trader money policy? But trader money policy, I did say, has been there. Mm. Uh, they've done it yeah. in some states. Yes. But it's, a lot of people are saying that it's ill-timed. Yeah. Why should you go to Osho State and give people Traders 10,000 naira. In the same Osho state, they are giving free glasses now. In the same Osho state, Paris Club reform perhaps may have been given to the governor of uh, Osho state to offset the backlog of salaries and pensions is owing so that it's like it, you are influencing the voters, whether directly or indirectly, to vote for mm. APC when the elections come. What do you think as an economist it, reading all those things? Yeah. Uh, First of all, I, I, if I had time, I would have liked to, I would have loved to look at the implication of 10,000 uh, trader fund or support program that the administration is looking at. It's not a bad idea. Unfortunately, it will only sustain people in poverty uh, because we have given money to people 2016, we gave in 2017, and um, the result of that is how we turn the headquarters of poor people. The reason may clearly mention that in South Africa, upon all the intervention programs we've had, but what we'll be takes saying people? It now. Must it take Theresa May to even? I, I understand. It to us? I understand. I've been saying it here but for I'm like just, how many months? I was just comparing yes. that with all the donations, donations we've made. Yeah. So for us to take people out of poverty, imagine if the person is so good at business and he makes whooping 40% return on investment on his 10,000. At the end of the year, it's now worth four, four, uh, 14,000. So 14,000 is still below poverty line. It's still below poverty. You need to end up to 60,000. How many years will it take? So 
We understand government is trying to support people, which is encouraged, but we need to do more. Now, what is the implication? No doubt, no doubt. Because when you go to these um, communities, what people do is there are, there are groups within the political part, political structure. They don't just go to market and start sampling people. That could happen in Abuja. It doesn't happen in rural areas that I have been to. You have to be linked one, or, one way or the other to some political party, and you have to be registered in some way, forms, where are the forms shared? What should be done is perhaps what we saw in bankers to the poor in Bangladesh, where people, which I think is the model government should look at, it is non-political. Is it, it the people, government model? Yes, people have put in cooperatives, and it is a cooperative that the money is given to. So they secure themselves as cooperative. The question I asked when this program was rolled out so, some times ago, before it became a really big, it became big issue, is what happened to people that want you win? Who is still pulling, pulling them up right now? How are we measuring performance of win when this administration came? The same thing. When this administration leaves, the question is, oh, we monitor all of this facility because we don't So the question right now is, well, what is happening? Is it a weapon to achieve rulership again, whether in Oshun State or in some other states? Or even for the 2019 general elections? you want to respond, Michael? Yes, I want to respond to this because um, what um, I understand about the Nigerian problem today is a fundamental issue that Every one of us, the major players, the politicians, individuals, corporate bodies, and everybody have to come together and um, tackle it head on. Because if we are trying to push the blame on the party in power or the past administration and all of that, we will continue to complain round the clock without achieving any uh, tangible result at the end of the day. You look at the scenario when we jumped from military rule into uh, dem uh, democratic uh, rule. It was then so many administrators, governors, and what a few now realize that they left something back in office. Many of them rushed back into power. They were compensated by their godfathers and all of that. They start ruling. At that point, their focus was no longer how to develop Nigeria, but they were there to pick what they left behind in the office. And that continued with less focus on development, with less focus on the Nigerian economy, with less focus on how so we can move. What you're saying is that we're still seeing that recycling of old Yeah, that is, where, that is where I'm coming from that, now. Yes. Then midway, midway into the uh, second uh, term of uh, President Obasanjo John then, uh, instead of them focusing on what should be done for the, for the country at large, they shift their base from there to a third term agenda. And you know that the height of corruption we are seeing in Nigeria today is it just emerged after that third term agenda. They start exchanging Ghana must go, bringing money in bags and whatever to settle the parliament, to settle this and that. So the problem we are faced with today will take you and I, my brother here, giving accurate analysis and all of that. We need to wake up and come up with... Um, a tangible solution that can solve this problem. Okay, ju ju just one solution quickly because I was just coming to solutions very quickly. So yeah. be ruminating around the solutions you will give. Mm -hmm. Quickly, what solutions do we quickly? To me, the political parties must a kind of grab back their power. The supremacy of the, of, of the party must come to be. Secondly, everyone looking for elective offices should be coming in not to come in to enrich themselves, rather to come and offer what they have. Like me, I am a successful businessman. I've developed several businesses that are striving in Nigeria today. To the glory of God, if I'm given the opportunity, I know my argument, I know okay. what I'm going to fight for. Okay, very quickly. Paul. Well, uh, uh, political debate should be issue-based. How are you going to develop the economy? Let us know how many megawatts of power are you going to contribute? Not just how many megawatts, because I've been involved in debates. I've moderated debates. It's not, it's easy to say, I will give you 10,000, but mm. no, no, the no, plan, but you yes, should give us How would you do it? Which yes. is now, so are the you, how? Uh, how? So you tell us what you want to do, how you want to do it, and when will you do it? And if you don't do it, what should we do? That is what it should be. Key issues, economy, because what affects all of us at the end of the day is the economy. You can share the bag of money if you like, but how will it impact everybody? And okay. that's the thing I want Very to quickly, say. Very quickly, um, So for money in politics, um, political parties need to rise to the occasion because the reform needs to start within the political parties. They must, um, the Electoral Act also needs to be amended 
to also include the, lim the, the limitation um, that can be spent on campaigns uh, that can be charged by political parties um, for nomination and expression of interest form. This would also increase the number of youth, women, and people living with disability representation in parliament. INEC do not have the power currently to prosecute um, those who violate the Electoral Act, especially on campaign financing. Perhaps that's why they want to collaborate with the EFCC, I'm aware. Oh, yeah, that with would that. be They want company. to collaborate with the EFCC to track the source of financing. But let's see how it goes. I want to say many thanks for joining us on the show today. Because if we continue, we'll talk to you. <laughs> Till you know, God knows when. But many thanks, gentlemen, and the lady for coming on the show. I've been speaking with Paul Alaji, senior economist at uh, SPM Professionals, Yetunde Bakari, senior program officer at Yaga Africa, as well as Michael Friday, uh, the chief executive officer at Vivid Global, a House of Representatives aspirant under the APC. I wish you well. Uh, you've heard all what my guests have said, but I think the last one I'll put is that the power belongs to the people. As Nigerians, we should know that the power belongs to us, and we outnumber this number of politicians. So we must demand good governance. Be the best you can be, and be the change that you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Bye now. <laughs>